the previous lecture we had discussed a relationship between strong inversion charge and surface potential where we linearize the relation. Today we will further discuss it and also we will discuss what is the value of slope factor, how to extract it and uh, in a region which is appropriate for us in the sense suppose you are discussing weak inversion and how to get a slope factor value which is more appropriate for weak inversion. As we had seen this surface potential which causes strong inversion to be effective is chi naught. Now, that is uh, given by 2 phi f plus Vsh. Now, this is fairly a constant. Vsh is also a uh, almost is fairly a constant and therefore, chi naught is a constant. Now, why how, how is it coming out to be a constant? That is because in strong inversion regime, you are assuming that the depletion charge does not increase with an increase in gate voltage. So, since the depletion charge does not increase in, in increase with gate voltage and because of charge sheet approximation, the entire inversion charge is concentrated at the silicon silicon dioxide interface and it does not contribute to an increase in the surface potential. Uh, so, the surface potential at way uh, for which the a strong inversion occurs is now therefore a constant. So, here one thing we can remember is that we are neglecting the logarithmic part in 2 q i plus natural logarithm of q i is equal to chi p chi p minus v s h minus 2 phi f minus v. So, in this we are in this entire discussion that we had about strong inversion, we have neglected this it is neglected in strong inversion and therefore, you therefore, this thing comes out to be a constant and uh, several of the approximations I am cut down that. So, resume again. Yeah. One thing that we can observe is that if we plot delta q i by q i normalized change in inversion charge with respect to normalized inversion charge, we would find that there is a sudden increase from a very small value almost a negligible value and then it saturates and it becomes almost a constant. So, here, here this is constant because you are dealing with strong inversion. So, in strong inversion because there is no further increase in depletion charge and so we find that the inversion charge increases with a constant slope, inversion charge increases with a constant slope. So, that is why you find that the change in inversion charge, no, normalized change in inversion charge with respect to inversion charge is almost a constant. But in weak inversion, you find a sudden increase as you are expecting because that is an exponential re relation. Exponentially with surface potential, the inversion charge increases as we have seen and therefore, there is a sudden increase and it gradually becomes smaller as you approach moderate inversion and here it is strong inversion, moderate inversion, strong inversion, okay. So, this was our discussion regarding obtaining this linearized relationships between inversion surface potential in strong inversion regime. So, we have made some approximations here and we obtained the linearized relationship and with using this we also were able to estimate the value of surface potential which causes strong inversion. It is slightly larger than 2 phi f uh, that is what we have observed. Now, what is the appropriate value of slope factor uh, which should be taken? We know that slope factor the, the way we are seeing is this is an ideal slope factor. It is not a constant as it is shown here. In fact, we know that it has, it is more or less non-linear at the, we know that the slope factor is non-linear especially for values of chi s which are smaller than, which are very small, smaller than about 20 times thermal voltage that is what we had seen. So, what is the appropriate value of slope factor because it keeps on changing with respect to chi s. So, with respect to chi s also V T B. V T B versus chi s also has a similar, V T B versus chi s also has a similar slope and 
So, this we had seen and this constant slope is an approximation. We had seen that actually the slope would be behaving more this way. Okay. Yeah. Suppose we want to obtain the slope for a value of chi s which is having this value and we know that this is our chi p pinch of potential, pinch of surface potential. This is V T B for the value of chi p that we are discussing. So, now we want this slope. So, suppose your chi s is not very small. So, in that case this slope, in that case the slope between these two values of chi s, chi s and chi p would be what you want to extract. So, if you want to find out its value, you would say this is suppose V T B of chi s. You would say that slope n is V T B of chi s, V T B of chi p divided by chi p minus chi. Now you can also write this as just write the value of V T B of chi p. So, it is V F B plus chi p plus gamma b square root of chi p minus V T B of chi s which is V F B plus chi s plus gamma b square root of chi s divided by chi p minus chi s. So, here you cancel out several terms chi p minus chi s plus gamma b square root of chi p minus square root of chi s. Okay. So, that makes it 1 plus gamma b. So, this is giving an average value of the slope factor between chi s and chi p. So, if you know the lower bound of your surface potential chi s, so you know the range of chi s which you are interested in, range of surface potential values which you are interested in. In that case, you can find out the appropriate value of slope factor n in this way for that chi s. So, it would work between, so it would work for all values of chi s which are higher than the lower bound of chi s that you have obtained. Now, where can you find an application of this kind? So, if you are operating the device in suppose in linear regime, so there is inversion in that case there is inversion from source to drain. Suppose you are operating it in separate saturation regime, then there is an inversion bit. So, you would be moving, but there is inversion at the source edge of the channel. At the source edge of the channel, there is inversion. Here, because you are operating in saturation regime, there is pinch off. So, here you would be moving from a value chi s to nearly a value chi p, pinch off. So, therefore, you would be interested in this slope this average slope. So, different ways of extracting the slope factor would be valid for different regions of operation of the device. So, this value is more appropriate for saturation mode k. Now, let us see for uh, weak inversion, for weak inversion operation, what is the more appropriate value of slope factor n, how to extract it. We know that q i is much smaller than q b in weak inversion. So, in weak inversion therefore, V T b is nearly equal to V g gate voltage. The value of gate voltage that you apply in weak inversion, since the inversion charge is very small. So, the contribution of depletion charge dominates for the potential drop across the gate dielectric. So, in that case, it is the surface potential plus the potential drop across the gate dielectric which contributes to the gate voltage. So, QI inversion charge contributes to the potential drop across the gate dielectric. Since q i is much smaller than q b, the potential drop across v ox is a function of q b itself. Potential drop across dielectric is a function of q b itself in weak inversion. So, because of that v t b is very close to v g or let us, let us recall. So, v g is v f b plus chi s which is the surface potential plus q i plus q b by c ox which we said is V f b plus chi s plus q i 
plus gamma b square root of chi s divided by c ox. If q i is negligible, if q i can be neglected, then we have this as v f b plus chi s plus gamma b square root of chi s divided by c ox. So, what is this? If you can, so let us further see, look at this chi s. If you are in operating in weak inversion, then the surface potential is quite close to the pinch off potential. Inversion charge is very small in value and therefore, surface potential is very close to pinch off potential. We had also seen that delta q i by 2 i q i increases suddenly with q i. That is, it increases suddenly with surface potential at in weak inversion. So, it increases actually ex uh, exponentially. So, now in weak inversion, we know that the inversion charge is much smaller than depletion charge and therefore, you can write this, rewrite this as V f b plus a p plus gamma b square root of chi p divided by c ox. Yeah. Now, this is V t b of chi p. So, in weak inversion, since q i is much smaller than q b, you can assume that this is very close to the gate voltage itself. Okay. So, therefore, what we observe is that we have this slope chi s or chi p versus v t b, which is a slope like this n. Now, you can replace in weak inversion, you can replace this by a v g versus chi s slope. We had also seen in the previous lecture that this chi p is chi naught plus v p, where chi naught is the in surface potential at the onset of strong inversion. V p is the pinch of local surface potential, which defines the boundary between weak inversion and between strong inversion and moderate inversion. Therefore, we could have written this v g as v f b plus chi naught plus v is local surface potential. See, we can observe that in this case, V can also be negative in the sense that you are operating in strong inversion and you, then you move towards moderate and weak inversion with a negative local surface potential as it happens in strong in a saturation regime. So, as you move from the source edge to the drain edge of the channel, the local surface potential increases and uh, chi s increases, you the inversion charge density keeps on reducing. So, if V is, so you can have a value of chi s which is smaller than chi naught for smaller gate voltages or for the same gate voltage, if you keep on increasing the local surface potential, inversion charge reduces, but chi s keeps on increasing. Now, if I plot the value of n, you would say that it is 1 plus gamma b by 2 square root of chi naught plus v. Yeah. So, if I plot v g, if I plot v g, versus v, I should, so this is valid, I should get a plot which is similar to this, I should get a plot which is similar to v t b versus chi s, v g versus would v would also therefore come out to be similar. So, here we are discussing values of v which are very close to which cause weak inversion. So, this is valid for weak inversion as we had discussed earlier because we are not considering inversion charge, we are not considering inversion charge in this expression Vg versus chi s. So, this is chi s. So, if we are very close to, if we are operating in weak inversion and we, we are having values of surface potential chi s very close to chi p, pinch of surface potential. In that case, Vg versus V would essentially look with the same slope as V t b versus chi s. So, V t b versus chi s would be similar to V g versus V and that is what so we are doing here. So, therefore, in weak inversion, we would say that I want to extract V t b versus, I want to extract the slope of V g versus V, which would give me the value of slope factor for and this I would like to do very close to pinch off. This I would like to do for values of 
surface potential which are very close to pinch off. So, that inversion charge density can be neglected compared to the depletion charge density. Since q i is much smaller than q b in weak inversion. So, let us further see this. So, what is the value of n? Now, we are saying this is nearly equal to d v g by d chi s in weak inversion. This is equal to d v g by d q b into d q b by d chi s. What are these two actually standing for? d v g by d q b. So, so, here you have the gate terminal, this is the body terminal. In weak inversion, you can take gate oxide capacitance and depletion capacitance to be in series because source and drain are effectively not connected electrically to the channel. So, so as you increase the gate voltage, the carriers coming from source or drain are negligible and most of the carriers would be responding from the body. So, you have these two in series. So, what is the value of d q b by d v g? Now, q the value of inversion charge is neglected. So, it is only the depletion charge that we are discussing when we are discussing the capacitances. So, that is the series combination of these two capacitances d q b by d v g that is charge. So, it is a series combination of the two capacitances. So, you can write this as 1 by C ox in series with C d and what is what about d q b by d chi s d q b by d chi s that is just the depletion capacitance C d. Now, what is this C ox plus C d depletion capacitance divided by C ox C d C d C ox plus C d divided by C ox. So, slope factor is now a ratio of these two capacitances. So, what is 1 minus 1 by n that would come out to be C ox C d by C ox plus C d. Right? So, that is C g by C ox where the gate capacitance where we make this, this is actually equal to C g. So, if we look at C g by C ox versus V g, what do we observe? For a given value of local sur surface potential V from accumulation, this goes into depletion which is weak inversion and then from here moderate inversion and strong inversion. So, accumulation, weak inversion, moderate inversion, strong inversion. So, in weak inversion, if you want to find out the value of slope factor, we would require to find out the, so if we write this down as Nw, now Nw is the slope factor in weak inversion. So, if I want to find out the value of slope factor in weak inversion, I can plot C g by C ox with respect to gate voltage. I can plot this C g by C ox with respect to gate voltage and when where is the weak inversion manifest in the best way, in the strongest way. That is just before, so wherever you, you have the smallest value of the gate capacitance. So, gate capacitance is series combination of oxide capacitance and depletion capacitance in weak inversion. So, it is actually the smallest value of depletion capacitance. So, you have the largest extent or depletion region thickness and that gives the smallest value of depletion capacitance. After that, it reaches nearly chi naught and when you increase gate voltage further, the, there is an onset of strong inversion or there is an onset of the inversion charges start increasing and the inversion charges become comparable to the charge density becomes comparable to depletion charge density and there, thereafter it actually starts increasing in a much more faster way exponentially with respect to the surface potential. So, so you have the, so for weak inversion you need to look at the smallest value of depletion capacitance that is the thick uh, largest value of depletion region thickness. After that the depletion region thickness does not increase any significantly and it is the inversion charge which starts dominating and therefore, the capacitance starts increasing again that is the 
instead of depletion capacitance, you have depletion capacitance, uh, you have the silicon capacitance being dominated by inversion charges. So, you do not have depletion capacitance only in picture and therefore, the capacitance keeps on increasing. After inver when inversion charges start assuming values which are comparable to the inversion charge. When inversion charge starts assuming a density which is comparable to that of the depletion charge. So, there the capacitance ke uh, keeps on increasing, the gate capacitance increases because the in silicon capacitance also increases. So, it is this lowest value where you have weak inversion in uh, manifest in its strongest manner. So, th therefore, we extract the value of slope factor at this lowest value and that corresponds to weak inversion. And why is it val valid? Because the gate voltage is nearly equal to the threshold function in weak inversion. So, therefore, the surface potential is now a linear function of gate voltage. So, we can determine the value of slope factor directly from gate voltage in weak inversion and that is what we have also we have found uh, we have discussed a method to do that. Now, let us look at strong inversion. So, this is regarding weak inversion. Now, let us discuss moderate inversion. In moderate inversion, you are dealing with a local surface potential which is nearly Vp. Okay. So, therefore, you can directly use an expression n equal to 1 plus gamma b by square root of chi naught plus v p because it is here when the when when the surface potential is chi naught plus v p we know that the expression 2 q i plus natural logarithm of q i here both the terms would be dominating both the terms would be dominating you cannot neglect one of the terms and therefore it is in this case it is advisable to consider the slope factor as 1 plus gamma v by 2 square root of chi naught plus chi h v p. What about strong inversion? So, let us look at this plot. What is the region in which strong inversion is important? So, in strong inversion, you are dealing with values of local surface potential which are smaller than v p. So, it is here that you can neglect this term and only this term dominates. So, you are dealing with these values. So, here it is and when you go for very small values of local surface potential, you may have nonlinearity as we had discussed. So, it is here that the it is most difficult to obtain the value of n. It would uh, whatever value you obtain would be actually an approximation. So, here it is better to take it as. So, where are you dealing with? So, if you are dealing with a value of uh, local surface potential which is very small compared to V p, in that case it is better to take n as 1 plus gamma b by 2 square root of chi naught. In case you are dealing with values which are not very small compared to V p, it is better to take it as an average value 1 plus gamma b by square root of chi naught plus v p by 2. So, it depends on the value of uh, local surface potential that you are interested in in strong inversion. So, in this lecture, we discussed ways to extract the slope factor and we discussed a, an appropriate value of slope factor in weak inversion where you can extract the slope factor for a gate voltage, for a given gate voltage using the linear relationship between local surface potential uh, with, between the surface potential and the gate voltage and we discussed uh, how to extract it for strong inversion regime.